Hi everyone, I'm on today to do a VR to uh, the Woodland Hag, um, Season of the Witch, 11 Questions of Witch's Way. So let's see, first question, in what way, witch, pagan, wise woman, etc., do you choose to identify and why? Uh, I call myself a witch. Um, I honor the goddess and the god and I'm definitely pagan as a result. Um, <clears throat> coming out of Catholicism, I was raised Roman Catholic and, uh, you know, baptized First Holy Communion, Confirmation, had to go to Catechism every Sunday, the whole nine yards. And um, after going back and forth for a few years because I kind of fell into this born-again phase, frighteningly enough, and eventually I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't believe it, and um, I just, I just felt like the goddess was always calling me, and this is where I'm happiest. This is where I'm, I feel the freest, the most in tune with myself, um, and it just freed me up from a lot of negativity. Um, just the whole thing just, I don't know, it just was wrong for me. And, um, so anyway, <laughs> pagan witch, that's me. Um, two, what does my daily practice look like? Um, I don't have any elaborate rituals I do every day or anything. Um, it's more just, you know, going outside and just listening to the wind or talking to a favorite tree, you know, quietly so the neighbors don't hear and have me haul away. Um, just kind of being aware of the world and nature. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, like I said, there's no elaborate rituals I do every day. I don't meditate daily or... I don't know. Um, what do I do for self-care? Self-care would be reading, um, doing some of my hobbies, sewing or crocheting or knitting, something like that that's very relaxing. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, go for mani pedis or I don't go to the spa for facial or anything like that. So, um, four, whoops. What do I do to take care of nature, wildlife, the environment, or animals? Um, much to my neighbor's dismay, uh, if you've seen the, the short video that I had up <clears throat> of uh, just kind of a little mini tour of my backyard, I kind of leave the backyard a little bit wild for the animals. Um, I do try to mow the grass, but um, it's not real pristine. I don't, and mostly because I don't like to use a lot of chemicals. I don't like to spray. I don't like to use a lot of weed killer or anything like that. Um, because the, I have deer in the backyard frequently and they come through and they eat the blackberries or they munch on the grass and I don't want them eating, you know, whatever, you know, brush killer or whatever put down. I, I don't use Roundup at all. Um, I do have some stuff I have to spray periodically on the blackberries here because they are classified as a noxious weed and if you let them go too far um, you can get a lot of trouble with the town. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, in general, I just, I try to keep everything very natural. And uh, I don't use a lot of fertilizer or anything like that. Like, I don't do anything really with my front yard except mow it. Um, yeah, so I just, I try to have as light a footprint as possible in that way. Um... How do I help heal or support humans or humanity? 
Well, I don't really, I don't know. It's not, you know, I don't volunteer at soup kitchens. I do donate frequently to like food pantries and um, humanitarian organizations that that can do more good. Um, but in general, yeah, no, I'm not like on the board of a, a nonprofit or anything. I, I don't really know how to answer this one. Um, what is my understanding of a higher power? Question six. Um, to me, wow, um, this is really hard to quantify. Um, just the, the spirit of life and divinity that permeates all of nature and all of us and um, like the, the some, a connection between all of humanity, all our, our conscious minds and you know the I, I can't explain this. This is just um, I just I feel like I know there is the goddess there and I feel her presence. Um, and just everything, every time I go out into nature and, you know, just walking barefoot through the grass or, like I said, going into the woods, taking a hike in the forest or something, just feeling that spirit, that energy. I, I, have, I can't explain what it is, but I just, I feel it when I'm there. Um, what is the most important life lesson I've learned so far? I would probably have to say not to judge other people and their path. Um, because frequently you can be wrong or misunderstand or just not have the knowledge, um, I think we are all trained to judge everyone else. You know, like somebody drives by in a crappy car and you think, oh, well, he's a bum and he doesn't work and he doesn't save his money, whatever. But you have no idea. I mean, you just don't have any idea. Um, one of my sisters, and I have four sisters, and I am estranged from, I would say, well, two for sure. The other two are just kind of, off in their own little worlds and I never hear from them. But the one of the ones that I am estranged from is one of the most mercenary people I've ever known in my life. Um, she actually made a comment one time, and this is probably why the car analogy sticks with me, that she had seen some woman driving down the road with her two little kids in some beat up old car. And her comment was, well, why doesn't she just go out and buy a new car? <laughs> there's just, there's no way to reason with her. So yeah, <clears throat> that's the kind of thing I try to avoid. Um, eight. How does this learned lesson affect my values and attitudes? Well, I think I kind of covered that already. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. What is my most spooky experience? Oh, this was good. This was good. Um, I was sleeping one night and I am single and the cats were not in the room. And it was during the winter, so I have this big, heavy comforter that I, I well, it's actually, it's a, it's a sleeping bag. And it's got that kind of ripstop nylon cover on it, um, on the, you know, the, the colored side, the, the outer shell. And I put that inside a duvet cover, and I use that kind of as my quilt. So, I, you know, it does double duty. I get some use out of it. Um, 
But you know, if, if you've ever had that stuff, that ripstop nylon, it's very noisy and it rustles a lot when it moves. And so I was laying in bed one night and as I said, the cats were shut out of the room. There was nobody else here. And all of a sudden, the, the space on the edge of the bed, like I was you know, laying down and right in front of me on the edge of the bed, the comforter sank down and I could hear the rustle. It was like somebody had sat down on the bed. And then a second later next to it, a smaller one as if a small person had sat down or the, the first one had leaned over and set their hand down and it made this rustling noise on, in, in the comforter. I mean, the, the thing was moving. And I was pretty scared and I think I just said, please go away. Um, I didn't see anything. There were no glowing orbs. There were no lights or anything. Um, but it never, it hasn't happened since. Now, this house did go through a period of some fairly intense paranormal, well, I would call it paranormal activity, where we were hearing people knocking on the door. Um, my son and, and his family live with me, but they're downstairs. They have this whole, like, little apartment of their own. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, they would hear people and people talking and they would hear music and we had lights kind of coming on and off and there was one night it was during a snowstorm and I was home alone and I heard this like let me see if, let's see if I can like duplicate this so you know what I'm talking about let me use this thing I heard this noise on the front door like somebody going like drumming their knuckles on the door and so I got up to go see if somebody was out there. And I thought, who the hell is out on a night like this? So I opened the door. Of course, there's nobody there, but there was snow everywhere, even up on the porch. And there were no footsteps. I mean, there were no footprints in the snow. There was nothing. It wasn't like a raccoon had come up. There was just, there was nothing. So I have no idea what that was. And we actually had so much going on for a while. I had called a local... Um, ghost busting team um, some some uh, guys that one of my sons had gone to school with had his own they were doing paranormal investigations and he was actually hoping to land a show and of course that hasn't worked out but um, yeah they never did come out and everything kind of settled down and stopped after a while so I don't know what was going on but yeah that that incident with somebody sitting on the bed in the middle of the night was kind of weird. <laughs> kind of weird. Uh, let's see. Would have I ever cursed, hexed anyone? I have not. Um, well, I take that back. It's everybody in the White House, <laughs> basically. Well, right after the election in 2016 all those guys wanted them out and i think most of them are gone now i'm not sure that quite quite counts as a hex but um and of course lots of other people were doing the same thing so i don't take that as all my doing although it probably didn't hurt to send a little extra energy there um <clears throat> also i'm not sure i'm entirely opposed to the idea um, as Susanna Budapest said, a witch who can't hex can't heal. So, uh, and in fact, my craft mentor was not at all averse to uh, blood sacrifice. You know, I think she had maybe sacrificed a chicken or something. Um, it was before I knew her. Um, but yeah, so I'm not the rule of three i don't believe in karma i'm just an old craft traditional witch and um not not wiccan strictly um so yeah um not entirely averse to that if if i felt the need for it i would probably do it yeah 
And question 11, if I could live anywhere, where would it be? Well, hmm, that's a tough one. Um, I'd probably say, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say Ireland, but I've never been there, so I don't know if I'd want to live there. Um, I'm sure, you know, if you go for a vacation or whatever, it's always fun, fun, fun. But, you know, when you live there and, and things are very different, um, I don't know. Um, I've lived in Japan and Puerto Rico, and I've lived in several different um, states. And I'm pretty happy where I am right now here in Oregon. But um, yeah, if I could go and, and live maybe the rest of my life in Ireland, yeah, I'd probably do that. So, so yeah, I think that's it then. Um, anyway, uh, if you like this, please hit the subscribe button down here in the corner. The little SJ is, works as a subscribe button. And um, please like and subscribe and please do leave a comment um, if any of this resonated with you or if you have anything to add of your own I'd love to hear it and uh, thanks so much for watching greatly appreciated and I hope you're all doing well take care and I will talk to you soon blessed be